Now, I see you and Mace got a little beef going. I'm not really a beef, a little a debate going. How, what's happening with that? Nah, Mace just um, I, I think a lot of a lot of brothers are are ignorant on on gang culture. Like he carries okay. such a a negative, you know, a negative stigma. Rightfully so, you know the the um the actual things that's broadcasted about it, people dying. Right. You know what I mean? And mothers losing children. But it's not as simple. It's a little bit more complex than somebody from the outside would like to believe. So it was things he was saying in his comments that was like, oh, you take an oath to, there's no oath. The oath is the loyalty to your friends that you grew up with poor. You stand by your friends through it all. So if you can't relate to that as a human being, you know what I mean? I don't know what to tell you. And it was something else he talked about. So was, he said something about an oath and what type of person to let you throw away your life. And but nobody tells you to throw away your life. When I was doing good in school and it was, I was expected to go to college, none of my homies would even let me be involved. Mm. When I decided to throw away my life, they just showed me how to do it the best way they could without going to prison or getting killed. Mm. Your homies protect the basketball players. They protect the football players. They protect anybody with a chance. But if you finna come out here and commit crimes and you gonna thug, they gonna show you how to do it as best to their ability. And it's profitable for everybody. So I think he spoke from a very ignorant place. And I just let him know, like, you, you come from a poor background too. So why would you go out here and give these white people some extra talk about to look like a hero when you're saying some ignorant shit, like if you really want to be part of the solution in this, you could actually come talk to somebody that's involved with the culture. So I just expressed like, man, he needs to be, re somebody needs to remind him what this is like. Why do people get involved with their friends and commit crimes? Like, cause that's all the gang is, a bunch of friends that's willing to commit crimes. Don't matter whether it's to, you know, get ahead in life or protect each other from people in other neighborhoods. Sometimes shit just happen and get out of control. Hmm. Interesting, I just didn't like that. I can respect that. I can respect that. You know, I I, I have to agree with you, Doc. Um, when I was coming up, even when even when, even when I had the eve after dark, even after even after I got chased out of Centennial by some Pyro boys, when I opened up eve after dark on Avalon Segundo, uh, because I was doing something that was good for the community for the hood, they protected me. Okay. Oh. They protect it, but then nobody messes with me. I, I, I've been very fortunate. I've never been robbed. Never. I, the few fights I had was because just was some, some, some man on man shit. Okay. Sure, sure. Somebody get some girl involved. Some girl yeah, involved. Nigga, all right, nigga. We got to go in the alley. Okay. Let's go in the alley and get this over sure, with. Okay. Sure, so, sure. but 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 they but my boys told me said uh, one of my boys, Yellow Ice. He said, "Man, look, you watch. You take care of the inside. I'm gonna make sure nobody do, do nothing stupid outside." That was that was our arrangement. Just let a few of the homies in from time to time. That was a cheap price to pay, man. Same sure, thing to do sure. those. Same and, thing and, to do those. And to confirm that point is just, I don't want to make gangs something I would advise a young person to get involved with. That's not the point. I'm not saying, hey, you know what, you should subscribe. I'm saying, look, it's not what you think it is. It's a lot more complex, and it's a lot more rooted in love than hate. You know, you don't just get into it or shoot somebody because you hate them is normally because somebody harms somebody you love and you love this person to death. It ain't about no damn street sign and no damn print on no bandana, man. Nobody care about that. That's why it don't matter if your bandanas match, y'all still have a war. It don't matter if y'all claim the same street, y'all still can have a war. It's, it's, it's more love that's creating, you know, the situation than hate and people don't understand that. But again, it's, it's such a, a tough territory to tread because you know, you don't, I don't want to say it and make people think, hey, it's cool, you know, if you, to do it. That's not the point of it. It's, it's, if you do it, if you're a part of it, you're already a part of it. But somebody from the outside shouldn't be having, you know, all this words and it's rude and ignorant. Like, you just don't, like, Mace just don't know. Like, a, oh, nobody says, a, oh, you don't have to stand up and do nothing. You want to because it's your friends. You, you love them. And, you know, I want to protect my homeboys. You know what I mean? I love them. I, I I know they mamas and they daddies, and they mamas and daddies fed me when I got in trouble. And some of my little homies, I held them when they was babies. And now mm. they, you know, 20 years old. Like, you don't think I'm going to kill you about one of them? You think you're going to do harm to them? No, I'm going to stand up for them. So, 
you know, and outside of that, you know, getting to some money and trying to make the best out of your life, you know, we in a bad situation where we from the confident why so you commit crimes to try to make the best out of your life. It ain't like it's a ton of great opportunities around the way. So I just didn't like how ignorant he sounded. And it was really a front to me for the general public. And I just was disgusted because I'm a fan of me. That was ridiculous. Feel me to say that as a preacher, too. Okay. I get that. All right. Um, what, what, you said at one point in time you were set to go to college. What, yeah. what, changed, what changed your direction? Um, I screwed up myself. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I could blame my circumstance. My mom went to prison. I moved to my father's house. Just gave up faith. Didn't know how I was going to pay. Um, started hustling, you know, selling rocks. Already was from where I was from. You know what I mean? It wasn't nothing, but started looking at the economics of selling drugs. Didn't really have the the morality clause of it all. You know, I, I thought people was making a choice to um, purchase. I didn't think, you know, as a kid, you don't know that people are chemically addicted, you know what I'm saying, to this substance. You don't know. And I was making so much money hustling I wanted to go to, to school and be a pharmacist to make $65,000 a year. I was making that at 18. Mm. You feel me? So I was thinking about how I was going to pay for college. You know what I mean? And started hustling like, oh, I do this to pay for college. And realized what I was going to get a job and pay for, I'd probably be making double that the next year. So, you know, it, sometimes you're too smart for your own good. Okay. I, I get that. I, I get that. Just a, uh, a bad mistake, you know what I mean? Did you pay for it? Yeah, yeah. I paid for it with a lot of morality. You know, I, I never went to prison, so thank God I don't, you know, I don't have a parole number or, or, you know, the time I was convicted, I was able to get a deferred entry of judgment, which is like a drug diversion for a drug dealer. So I, I don't have a tail, you know, I'm able to, I don't have a felony that's on my record. So, but I paid for it morally because now, a lot of times, you know, I feel like shit about a lot of stuff, but it also gave me insight. You know what I mean? And that's what I try to share with the world through music. I like that, Doc. I can respect that. I, can respect. I was expecting a different interview, man. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of interview was you expecting, well, big girl? Well, you know, you know, um, I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna say I was expecting a different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. I'm glad. The, I'm glad the interview we getting we having right now is what we what, what we getting. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know when when, when I saw Mace's comments, I think you sent me the link, and he said it was uh, the weakest thing a man could do was join the gang. I'm like, damn, that's some hard shit right there. Okay, I didn't know yeah. how you gonna, I didn't know how you gonna respond to that, but I'm seeing after I'm listening to your response, I'm impressed, Doc. I'm impressed with your response. You know, sometimes you get brothers come at you a whole different way, man. Hey, dude, you know. That's what we do and how we do it and blah blah blah. I understand you make it you make it make sense. Okay. Yeah. That, that, well, I that mean, wasn't expecting that. The logics of it all is is you know, being able to be sober. You know what I mean? The average person maybe not speaking of it that was sober, like being conscious through the whole experience and, and really asking questions to your friends is you can see what it is. They may not be able to see because they so high and drunk at that point of just dealing with the trauma that it causes. They can't explain it. Me, I was sober. I ain't never smoked or drank a day in my life. So I was sober through every experience. And I always talked to my homies. You know, I've been knowing them since we were kids. So I was able to pay attention. I even asked my older homies questions that made them uncomfortable. Mm. But, you know, I was able to kind of get an understanding and, and make wiser decisions even within that culture. You know what I mean? Like, everybody couldn't just tell me to do something. Like, it had to make sense to me because... I had to be willing to go to prison for life based on the decision. So, and I realized everybody else wanted that choice. They just didn't know how to make it. You know what I mean? Their circumstances made them have to be more of a soldier without, you know, question for people. That was never me. I was always able to question it. And you fight enough niggas and you're willing to, you know, bust your gun for your respect. People feel like they need to answer them and give you that much, you know, credence and I, I, I totally respect that. Doc. People willing to give you that credence and respect. You know what I mean? They willing to answer your questions. 